Well, it's very difficult to define what a good teacher is, but I think that the, the first golden rule has to be a commitment to doing it. So if you're going to teach well and you're going to teach in Cambridge where the students are extremely talented uh, and very well motivated, then you really have to invest a lot of effort into learning your subject, preparing your subject, staying up to date with your subject as well. So it takes time and it takes commitment to make sure that you can deliver uh, the best possible lecture. So I think if the audience can see that you're engaged and they can see how they fit into the picture too, uh, then that works for a very nice, dynamic uh, and constructive lecture environment. So I always try to uh, explain as much as possible where I come from, where I fit into this picture that I'm presenting. Uh, and also I like to try to explain where the students fit in as well. So in all of my lectures, I'll, I'll ask questions to the students about why do you think things are a certain way? The kind of questions that we can't come up with hard or fast answers to. Why does the hormone growth hormone, why is it involved not just in growth, but also in the response to fasting? Where you'd think that if you weren't eating, the last thing you'd want to do is grow. Why do you think that is? Let's have a discussion about it. Maybe come and give me some of your ideas after the lecture. And if you can get the students to think about the material, not just assimilate the material, but actually think about it and generate ideas of their own, that's when I think you've done a really good job. That's what I would uh, seek to achieve. You can be told everything in a lecture. You can go and look up things in papers. You can revise. You can get 100% in an exam. But that's not doing science. Doing science is all about looking at when things go wrong, interpreting data where no interpretation exists that you can look up, and then knowing what experiment you can do to pursue this further uh, and actually get to the answer that you're seeking. Uh, and it's only really in practical classes that students can do this and they can engage with, with real science. So it's absolutely vital for all of our science students, medical students, veterinary students, uh, and of course the natural scientists, to actually get involved, to do hands-on practical work, uh, and to get a feeling for what happens in a lab environment and how it doesn't always work smoothly. Part of the challenge is overcoming those difficulties that you come across. And when you study an area of physiology which is as esoteric as the function of the middle ear in small mammals, which is what I do for my research, um, I like to be able to say that I'm also contributing to society by teaching medical students, for example, teaching veterinary students uh, and teaching scientists. So uh, I certainly enjoy the idea that uh, what I do benefits them and ultimately benefits society.